Psalms chapter 68 to the chief musician a psalm or a song of David so a psalm or a song it's what a psalm is it's a song it's in your Bible your hymnal let God rise so he got up when Stephen was stoned he's gonna get up to come and get his church and he's gonna come get up the second advent let his enemies be scattered all those that rebel against God let them also that hate him flee before him well where are they going to where are they going to run to where is someone going to run away from God as smoke is driven away you watch smoke and it just goes into nowhere that's what the enemy is going to be so drive them away as into nothing as wax melteth before the fire you get a you get a, a put of a wax you put it before fire and next thing you know it's it's gone it's been melted so let the wicked perish at the presence of God now that's an interesting thing with the fire there with the wax you put wax to a fire it does not disappear like smoke it just turns into a puddle and when God puts men into fire, they're not just going to disappear within time. Their soul and their body is going to be forever there, Luke 16. And God's going to be in the presence. But let the righteous be glad. Why? Because we're not in the fire. We're not under God's wrath. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Listen, we ought to have a rejoicing, a gladness more than what the world has. We got hope. Sing unto the sing unto God. Sing praises to his name. It's all about God. It's all about the glory of God. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens. Listen, he, God is where NASA will never go. By his name, Jah, and that's just abbreviated form of Jehovah, and rejoice before him. Wait till, we, wait till we get the glory and we're standing before God for all eternity with a new body, no breakdown, no pain, no sorrow, no suffering. A father of the fatherless. Oh, a child who lost a dad. Has a handicap. God fills in. And a judge to widows. Now, if you read the Old Testament and, and you discover, even in the New Testament, the book of Acts, if you were a widow, it looks like that you were just not treated well. And there were obligations of the family to take care of the widows. And there was obligations of the church to take care of the widows. There was obligation for the Jews to take care of the widows. And it wasn't being done that Paul had to address the issue through Timothy. And the book of Acts, that they set up deacons to, you know, take care of widows. And, you know, I want to be on a deacon board in a Baptist church. And do you take care of widows? That's the first time it shows up. If a widow in your church does not have family to take care of her, is she being taken care of by the church or is she being taken care of by Social Security or welfare? That's wrong. According to the Bible, she should be taken care of by the church. She should be a godly woman. There are requirements that Paul writes to Timothy. You'll find this fatherless and this widows all through the Old Testament as a warning, by the way. Is God in his holy... Wait a minute, I've skipped somewhere. A father fatherless and judge the wills. Is God in his holy habitation? Yes, he's in heaven. He's in glory. He was in his habitation when he came on this miserable, rotten planet. This is where God was to be. It was the prophecy. <clears throat> God's going to be his holy habitation in Jerusalem in the millennium. God setteth the solitary in families. I don't know into that one. He bringeth out those which are bound with chains. Book of Acts. How many times? Jeremiah was in prison and God brought him out. Joseph was in prison and God brought him out. 
But the rebellion, rebellious dwell in a dry land. What's that? No water, no plants. Not a fruitful land. O God, when thou wentest forth before thy people, Exodus, when thou didst march through the wilderness, Numbers, Selah, oh, maybe the wilderness in uh, Revelation chapter 12, when Jesus says abomination of desolation, that's the, when he sits in the place where he should not, spoken of Daniel. God is going to lead those Jews down to where they need to be. Just like he led them in the wilderness to the promised land. This time he's going to lead them out of the promised land. You know that, right? Because in the land, the Antichrist is there. The earth shook. Well, earthquake. But did you read in Revelation 12 where the earth opened up her mouth to swallow the water? Did the dragon try to drown her? Israel, the woman? You know, you can find a lot in Revelation in Psalms. Daniel covers a lot of Revelation. The heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Just before God, Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, and God is Jesus Christ, comes, the Bible speaks of that the stars of heaven are going to fall, one third of them. Revelation 12. Even Sinai itself was moved at the presence of God. And if you read the Old Testament, one of the prophets says that it's going to split into two. The God of Israel. Now we talked about the other night, which God? God of Israel. The God of Ishmael, the Arabians, is not the God for salvation. The God of the Roman Catholic Church is not the God of salvation. The God of Baptist churches is not the God of salvation. It has to be the God of Israel. God is not the God of the Baptists. I can tell you all kinds of thousands of denominations among the Baptists and fight among the Baptists. I can show you Baptist churches where they don't have the doctrine of God. It has to be the God of Israel. It has to be that Jewish Messiah, not the colored Messiah, and not the, Ho the Hollywood or Hollywood, whatever you want to call it, Messiah. Then, O oh God, did send a plentiful rain. Now, I don't completely understand this. I've heard several accounts. When you get to the end of the tribulation, it's the latter and former rain. And you study that out. There, there's something to it. I've heard, you know, I've heard many things on that. I don't want to mention because I'm not sure. But the latter and former rain, I do know, is connected with the final days of the tribulation. Whereby thou didst confirm thy inheritance when it was weary. Thy congregation has dwelt therein. He's talking about, he's talking about the Jews all the way. Therein would be in the land. And we've already seen Sinai is going to be moved. And maybe this is where the Lord's coming through into the land on his way. Like Israel was on its way to the promised land across the Jordan. If that's the case, then that former and latter rain could be as the Lord comes back. As he comes in the land, he waters the land. I, like I said, I don't know. I'm just throwing that out there. I could be totally wrong. Thou, O God, hast prepared of thy goodness for the poor. Now that's a very remarkable word there. Because if you read the accounts of the Gospels and the book of James, if you are rich in the tribulation period, very less chance will you be saved. 
First of all, in the tribulation period, to be rich, you've got to have something that God doesn't want you to have, and that's the mark of the beast. So when God comes down, you find those Jews in the wilderness, they're not going to be rich. Listen, when Moses brought Israel out, out of Egypt, they were rich rulers. They had all kinds of goods. They had gold, silver, everything. Even though it was borrowed from the Egyptians, there were some that were just rich. Jesus told the Jew in his time, don't go back and get your shirt. When they go down to that place where God's prepared for them, they're going to have just the clothes on their back. When they left Egypt, they at least had dough. As I think they said they gathered the dough in their clothes. They just haven't leavened it yet. It's a whole different case in the tribulation at the end. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. How many people have published the King James Bible? The Geneva Bible. Since Gutenberg came up with his press, how many have published the Word of God? And I ain't talking about the modern Bibles of Hort and Westcart, the, 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 the God-rejecting Bibles of Sinaiticus and, and, and Vaticanus. I ain't talking about them being published. I'm talking about the King James Bible, the Geneva Bible, and those that have been approved of by God, not man. God knew there was going to be a publishing of the Bible even long before Gutenberg was born. Imagine if you go back in a time machine, go back to, to David, say, David, you see this verse 11? Even though there's no verse marking, and publish it. You know, they're going to come up one day, they're going to, they're going to print out books left and white. Right. God's word's going to be, and they, they would be looking at you like, yeah, okay. All the funny farm. You ever wonder how many Bibles have been produced for the public on the printing press? And let me ask you a question. How much filth does Satan put on the same printing press? You know, he'll put out the newspaper, and how many people will read the newspaper more faithfully than they'll read the Bible? How faithfully will people read other books and novels before they'll read the Bible? And it says, the word that God gave, that is to be praised and not worldly junk. Kings of armies did flee apace. Armageddon, maybe. And she that tarried at home divided the spoil. If the wife can't go, because she's got her wifely duties of cooking and cleaning and taking care of the children at home. Is God so cruel and kind to not give her a reward of what her husband does? No. God says there that she that tarried divided the spoil. A wife will reap what her husband. Now you think... All right, glory to God, because we're God-honoring, and we try to do what God tells us kind of family. What about a poor wife that has a lazy Christian husband? She's going to reap the same thing. Absolutely nothing. I would say so much. She that tarried at home. She that tarried. She that tarried at home. A woman has no place in combat. You know, I think it was a Jethro. When he asked Deborah to go, that, 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 was, that was just, that guy was so perverted to ask, a, well, I won't go into battle unless you go with me to a woman. And then Deborah's husband never even spoke up and, and, and re, uh, spoke against, protested, letting my wife go into battle. Other than that, I don't think I read in the Bible to come think any women that are in are in battle in the Bible. But she stayed at home, did what she's supposed to do. She's got houseware and housewife and motherly duties at home. And 
Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if she doesn't do it, I don't think she'll get the spoil. And she's too busy wrapping her mouth with the neighbors and not doing what she's supposed to be doing, watching TV all day long, messing with her life. I don't think God will reward her. That wouldn't be right. I have heard wives in Baptist churches, oh, I would never make my, my husband a sandwich for lunch. You ignorant ass. That's your job. And I can give you a little time. I can show you the Bible where it says a man is to do the dishes. As a man wipes the plate and turns it over. There are duties of the wife in the home. And if she does what she's supposed to, she's going to get part of what her husband does. And he better be doing what God wants him to do. Or if he doesn't and he's a lazy, worldly Christian, couch potato Christian, his poor wife and maybe his family won't get anything because he didn't do anything. That's a sorry state. Though ye have lean among the pots. Now as far as lean among the pots, I've, I've read all kinds of things. But... The thing about the character of this, of this verse, the lean among the pots, that's, I mean, that's not a place you want to be. That's a low spot. You're in the kitchen. You're on KP duty. All right? Pots and pans. Notice how it, it's followed by the wife that tarries at home. And if you pick up, if you keep on going with the character, lean among the pots, that's her spot. That's her job to be among the pots and pans in the kitchen. I don't like that. Yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and with her feathers with yellow gold. You go from a low degree to a golden degree if you do what you're supposed to do in God. You may be a lowly person here on this planet. If you love the Lord Jesus Christ and do what you're supposed to do, and whether you're a male or female, you know, who am I, what am I? A homeless man can, can do what God wants him to do, witness, read his Bible, try to do right, and in heaven end up with crowns and precious stones. Where any of these CEOs out there will be burning in a lake of fire. You know what, you know what a pot goes on, don't you? It goes on a fire. Here's somebody who's suffering from kitchen, you know, he works in the kitchen, he's still not making a living, and then in glory, he's got crowns and all that. It's from low degree to a golden degree. It's almost like your Cinderella. You know, she's out there cleaning and sweeping and all that, and Prince Charmer takes her away, and she lives in a lack of luxury. And to her maids won't do what she wants her to do, and she's got to do it herself because she was a former maid. That's the other side of Cinderella that you haven't heard. When the Almighty scattereth the kings in it, God's in control of leadership. Even though the Satan, Satan will put somebody in his position, in his domain, God can say, I override that. Saul was sent by God and the people. The people wanted Saul. God put him in the position. Satan took over. And God says, excuse me, Satan. He needs to go while I put my man in office. And then when it came time, uh, uh, Solomon was not David's firstborn. Devil tried to get David's firstborn in there and Joab and all, do all that. And God's like, excuse me. Satan, step aside. That's not the one I wanted. So, God's in control of government, and yes, Satan will. Satan is, has a vast majority of it. And I hate to tell you, President Obama is an act of God. God approved of him to be in the Oval Office. If you don't like it, you got a problem with God.
Okay? Just telling you the truth, trying to help you out. It was white as snow in Solomon. I guess in Solomon it snows. So it does snow over there in the promised land. The hill of God is as the hill of Bashan. Describing. So if you go to if you go to Bashan, you'll see it was like God's hill, Zion. A high hill as the hill of Bashan. Description. If you were to read this to an Old Testament Jew, they would know what Bashan looked like. Why leap ye, ye high hills? This is the hill which God desireth to dwell in. Yea, the Lord will dwell in it forever. Jerusalem, Zion, no matter all the hills and the mountains of the world, like Ararat, where the ark is today, God is going to settle himself in Jerusalem. It will be the highest elevation in the world during the millennium. I just ask that you just forgive me as, as we go on. My eyes have been blurry and getting blurry again. We'll keep going as long as I can read. The chariot of the God, the chariot of God, are twenty thousand, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. Sinai is where they got the law. Sinai is where God was in the midst of the congregation of Israel. Israel was all around the mountain. God was in the midst right on top. Jesus Christ is going to be in Jerusalem and all the world is going to be around him. You're going to see angels in the millennium. You're going to see born again Christians in their new bodies in the millennium. You're going to see the 12 apostles of the Lamb in the millennium. You're going to see David, Abraham, Isaac, in the millennium. Thou has ascended on high, Jesus Christ. Thou has led captivity captive. And that you can find in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 8. Thou has received gifts for man. Thou has received gifts for men. Christ received gifts for us. He is the gift of God. Yea, for the rebellious also. There's a gift for, for the rebellious? Jesus Christ is a gift to all. It's a gift you've got to receive. That the Lord God might dwell among them in Jerusalem. You'll be an interesting fact to find out who the company of people are going to be around in the millennium. Blessed be the Lord. Happy. You want to make God happy? Do what he says. Who daily loadeth us with benefits. Well, see, if I get this job, I get health. I get life insurance, I get a 401k, I get stocks, I, yeah, see, this job is loaded with benefits. No. What's it say? Blessed be the Lord who daily loads, I got more benefits than a company has. I have the God of benefits. Listen, God has a life insurance program that's beyond any life insurance program. It doesn't happen after I die. I got eternal life right now. I got a health program right now that when I go to be with glory, I will never get sick. I will never need hospitalization. That's a better plan, I believe. Company uh, uh, stock program, if I do what God tells me to do, he's going to give me crowns and rewards. That lasts for eternity. That's a lot more benefits than getting a, a keys to the company washroom. That's so much better. Even the God of our salvation. It has to be the God of your salvation. 
Don't you claim that if you're lost. But Selah for the Jews. Watch what all the benefits God's going to give to those Jews in the millennium. He's going to give them the perfect temple again. The perfect sacrifices. The perfect crops. The perfect land. The perfect home. The perfect family. The perfect God. Those 12 apostles that followed him around. They're going to be there with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and the 12 tribes. Perfect weather. Given by God. He that is our God is the God of salvation. Oh, no other God can give you salvation. And our God is the Jewish God, the God of Israel in verse 8. Does that nail that down? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other. And unto God the Lord belong the issues from death. Who's in control of death? Jesus is. He grabbed the keys of death and hell. You know, Satan can't kill a Christian unless God says do it. Because you know Job 1 and 2 that if Satan had the opportunity to do it, God restricted him. But God shall wound the head of his enemies. Now, if you don't know that one, there's the Antichrist being shot or with a sword or something. That is Genesis 3.15. That is Psalms 110.6, Isaiah 1.6, Habakkuk 3.13, Mark 12.4, and Revelation 13.3. But most important, Genesis 3.15. And the hairy scalp of such an one as goeth on still in his trespasses. His trespasses. Well, I guess you know, I guess you can say one thing. The Antichrist is not going to be bald. Going by that verse. I don't want to be bald Antichrist is come up, just to think about. The Lord said, I will bring again from Basha. Bring what again? I will bring my people. Oh, okay, again from the depths of the sea. You mean another regatherization regather, re of Israel? I, I thought there's some people out there that teach God's done with Israel forever and done and no more. Not according to this verse. And we've been all talking about the second advent. That thy foot may be dipped in the blood of thy enemies. Where is the blood when Jesus Christ comes back? It's on his vesture. He's been trespassing the wine press and the wrath of God. That matches the second advent of the Lord Jesus. And the tongue of the dogs in the same. They have seen thy goings, O God. God's done protected Israel many times before, and it's been recorded, and they've seen it. Even the goings of my God, my capital K, Jesus Christ, King, in the sanctuary. The singers went before, the players on instruments followed after, among them were the damsels playing with thimbles. Do you see drums? Do you see microphones, CDs? I don't think all that crap's going to be around in millennium. Bless ye God in the congregation, even the Lord from the fountain of Israel. Israel, Israel. Oh, how would the United Nuts and Arabians hate that? You know, if you were to read this chapter in, in amongst the Arabians over there in the Middle East, you probably wouldn't live to get past 27, 28. You, your head would be rolling on the ground.
The United Nations, they'd be pulling all their little earpieces out of their ear, listening to the interpreter hear you speak. There is little Benjamin with their ruler. Benjamin is the youngest. The princes of Judah and their council, the princes of Zebulun and the princes of Nethetali. Thy God has commanded thy strength. Israel's strength is God's strength. Strengthen, O God, that which thou hast wrought for us. Wrought means work. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Isaiah 2.2 2. Uh, Ezekiel. Last four, five, six chapters. Listen, do you think those... those I almost said three. Do you think those wise men that came to Jesus was a first-time occurrence? That's going to happen over and over in the millennium. Those wise kings are going to come in their caravans and come to Jesus Christ and bring them gold and bring them frankincense and bring them sacrifices and bring whatever they have to Jesus Christ. And Jesus said that, in, I mean, in, well, Jesus said the word. He is the word. But in the prophets, it said, like Egypt, if you don't come to the Lord, if you don't come to the Holy Mountain, you're not going to get rain in the millennium. Never mind those, those kings that brought the baby Jesus. Wait till you born again Christian. If you do what the Lord tells you to do and you get a city in the millennium to reign in, you wait till you see all those nations that come up to you and say, Hey, we're going to leave, we're going to leave your nation for a little while. Why are you leaving? Because we're taking all these presents to Jesus Christ. Well, God bless you. Go right on. I bless your journey. You imagine those people that they're, they're, they're on their way to Jesus. You know, I think I heard a story like this one day somewhere. I can't call it. Some caravan going to some, some king. I don't. Going to Jesus. Every wise man goes to Jesus. See, you can reverence a little baby Jesus and the three wise men, and, 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 but there's greater and better. Because of thy temple in Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto thee. Amen. Rebuke the company of spearmen. It's an army. They got the spears. The multitude of the bulls. It's an enemy. When you, one of the Psalms speaks about when Jesus is on the cross, many bulls have compassed me. It's an enemy. It's a description of an enemy. He's got horns. He's angry. With the calves of the people, baby cows. To everyone submit himself with the pieces of silver. Scatter thou God the people with delight in war. Get rid of all this war. Get rid of all those, 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 those wicked people. Get them out of our way. And that's what's going to happen in the millennium. And by the way, anybody who does break, just to let you know, a side note, anybody who does break the rules, doesn't want to do right, there's going to be a lake of fire where the Dead Sea is, and Jesus will tell you to go jump in the lake. It may be the fact is, you know, there may be court cases brought to us, Christians. And where it's a serious matter, you can you imagine us going, uh, Peter, hi, I'm from such and such city, I'm such and such Christian, I got a problem with such and such person, my citizen, I, I turn him over to you. Peter does what he has to do, or Paul, John, James. And then they, if it's even more serious, they may bring him to one of the twelve tribes of Israel. You don't want to go to Jesus Christ and be charged before the judge in Jerusalem. He'll tell you to go jump in the lake. Princes shall come out of Egypt. All right. Princes are coming out of Egypt all the time. Egypt is in a mess today. Why? Ethiopia shall soon stretch out her hands unto God. Wait a minute. You mean we're going to get another Ethiopian eunuch that's going to go to Jerusalem to see God? See, we hear about the Ethiopian that left Jerusalem to go home with the gospel. 
We're going to see the Ethiopian eunuch go to God. How about that? Can you imagine the Ethiopian eunuch? He's, got his, he's reading Isaiah 53, right? He walks up to Jesus. Is that you? I don't need Philip. Is that you, Jesus? That's me. By the way, the, the queen has brought me all these spices for you, look. Queen of Sheba did it for Solomon. Listen, you read about the Queen of Sheba and Solomon. You know what that is? That's a Gentile nation, the Gentile rulers, king, queens, going to Jesus in the millennium. Read that description, what, how she did, how everything was perfect, and all his servants and everything. And she stood there and all, she had all her questions answered. Sing unto God, ye kingdoms of the earth, not just Jews. Wouldn't it be great to have a worldwide sing for God? And perfect music without all this crap that's running around Southern Gospel and Christian uh, CCM and rocking for Jesus and rapping for Jesus and banging you on the head for Jesus and all this other junk. Wouldn't it be great that commercial, if it, you know, Satan takes the truth and twists it. Wouldn't it be great in the millennium, I like to teach the world to sing, to sing about Jesus, and have that thing wreck all around the world. Wouldn't that be great? You want to talk about a worldwide chorus of everybody singing to, to Jesus Christ in one accord? Well, one accord. Where do I hear that? I hear that in, in the book of Acts with the early church. Ye kingdoms of the earth, oh, sing praises unto the Lord, Selah. Oh, I guarantee that Jew will be singing once the Messiah comes, they recognize who he is. They're going to be singing of, 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 of sorrow, of repenting, of being sorry, and then joyful, here they come and into their land. <laughs> to him that rideth upon the heavens of heavens. Oh, where's that? <laughs> Where do you find that in the book of Revelation? Jesus riding on the horse. Which were of old. Lo, he does send out his voice. I'm just trying to. My vision's getting a little blurry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Send out his voice. Send out his voice. What's it say in Revelation that he. That is. That's about him coming back on the horse. And out of his mouth goeth a. Uh, a sharp sword by word in uh, Ephesians chapter 5 that when, when it talks about Ephesians chapter 6 when it talks about uh, let's see the armor of God the sword is what oh let me see it's the word that sword that you read about Jesus Christ coming back on horseback is his voice He ain't got a literal sour coming out of his mouth. He's got the Bible coming out of his mouth. And that a mighty voice. Oh, yeah. The mighty voice that said, let there be peace. Be still. Thy faith has saved thee. Be whole and sin no more. Peter, do thou love me? I am the bread of life. He that drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but he that drinketh of me shall never thirst again. Huh? Is that is that what it's about? That's that voice. Ascribe ye strength unto God. Give it to God. Give your strength to God. His excellency is over Israel, not America. And his strength is in the clouds. Behold, the day of the Lord, uh, woe unto you, desire the day of the Lord, woe unto you, is a day of clouds, is a day of trouble, is a day of anguish. O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy place. That doesn't mean wicked, mean, that means awesome, great. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. 
in three words to close up this whole chapter. Blessed be God. Whoa. Wait a minute. All the blessings that God's going to give me, and he's going to enjoy the moon, and he's going to enjoy when Jesus Christ sits for eternity, where Jesus Christ ought to be, and Satan and his angels are put down. And everybody that's against him, and has been against him, has been cast into the lake of fire, for God is holy. Be ye holy. And if you don't want to be holy, I'll have to put you in the flames. God is righteous. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. Christ shall come.